Hello again and welcome to uh, Smokey Paul's workshop and today we're going to do a request from uh, one of the viewers who wants to see how we change the back wheel and the chain on the Sinus 125 Terrain. Um, what I'll just quickly go through first, what I've got with me, 21mm uh, deep socket so you can undo the lock nut and the main nut on the axle. 18 mil spanner to support this nut on this side. I've got a screwdriver, just in case we want to gently nudge the pads back in. Um, a 13 mil, which is for the lock nuts here. A little pair of pliers, just for the chain. A ruler and a Sharpie, which I'll show you about later, and obviously some rag and some chain loop. Okay. First thing we do is to remove the circlip from the chain. I'm doing this because we're going to remove the wheel and then adjust the chain afterwards uh, as requested. If you're just going to adjust the chain, obviously you don't need to take this off. This is just a matter of loosening a few bolts, but you'll see that on the last procedure. Okay, so what I'll do now is I will pop the circlip off the chain okay what i've done is i've moved the um, chain split link into a nice area just get a pair of pliers and just pop him off there you go and that's now popped off quite difficult to do <laughs> in this position so you can see but there you go spinning round and you'll see there's a little gap at the bottom so take him off and loosen him so now we've got that nice and loose just drop the chain make sure you put him on a on a nice rag okay what we do now is just to start we just loosen those to make life a little easier on both sides okay same here then you're going to be using your 21 mil socket pop him on there break him off your 21 again don't forget your 18 which we're going to put onto the opposite side Okay, there you go. So that's the end of that bit. Take the nut off now. Take your little adjuster plate off. Everything else realistically within here, leave that in place. That's a good guide for when you're putting everything back together. It doesn't need to come out unless you, it's really dirty and you want to clean it. Okay, so what we do now, just pop him out. See this side. Okay. You'll notice the balance of the bike will change. I'm actually slide him out. Okay. Leave him in. And there you have it. This side, if you want to come round. What I tried to do is leave this in place because obviously you've got your wires for the speed sensors and everything on there. Just slide him out and that's it. Simple as. If you want to, good idea, 
make sure you've got some nice rubber grease on those joints. What I will do as well is I'm going to put a little bit of um, um, protectorant on the axle when I put it back in as well. So there you go, that's it, as simple as. Make sure this stays in place. If it doesn't, just rock him and drop him back down and he'll sit there like that quite happily. So if you're putting the wheel back in, that would be your first thing. Make sure that's there. Okay, what I'll do now is I'm just gonna um, get some oil and some protectorant, make sure our wheel and everything's all clean uh, and then I'll come back to the video and we'll put the wheel back in and adjust the chain. Okay, so we're ready to go now. What I'll do is I prefer to use a little bit of copper slip for my uh, anti-corrosion protection. Bit of a set, you know, it's a really good anti-seize um, assembly grease. So once you've got that and you're happy with that, if you're lucky like us and we've got a little bit of a dip, you can line everything up pop your wheel, pop your uh, rear axle in, line the wheel nicely, check your spacers. Also remember on this side of the wheel to check you've got your gap in the um, brake disc, in your pads, line that all up, that should all pop in quite easy. pads have dropped let me just do that again screwdriver just gently if you get that problem as I said lever the pads apart very gently you don't want to damage the surface Still not enough clearance. Just gently lever them in. There we go. That's looking pretty good. There we go, she's there. Okay, so now we're there. Just drop your back wheel back, it will all line up. Obviously it's really difficult trying to do this one hand and filming, <laughs> everything else. There we go. So I'm happy with this side, we're there. So if we go around to the other side, just make sure again, we've got everything in, everything's happy, everything's lined up. Gently tap her through. Okay, and then we've got to there. And then you'll see through there. There we go. Again, I'm trying to line this all up without looking, so very difficult. But there you go, and that is your back wheel safely back in. Okay. What we do now is we just pop that and that back on, so everything's nice and secure. put our wheel back to our locked position. I'm just going to tweak that up for now. Okay. 
Okay. Next job. Okay, so next thing we do now is replace the chain. So I'm just gonna use my weight on the box, and that's useful, just to lift the back wheel up. Put that top section of the chain on. Feed him through. Okay, keep it on the sprocket. It makes lining up the uh, split pins, the split link, so much easier. There's your split link. Yeah, that's nice and greased. I've already just checked that. Put your link through. And there we go. Check that's nice and clean, the outer link. Try and look where the marks are as well. Put it on the same way. Push him fully on. Okay, when you're replacing the split link clip itself, you always have to make sure when you're fitting it that that closed end goes towards the direction of travel. So the closed end is always going to the direction of travel. So pop him on through the loop, the hole, so he sits there nicely. Use your pliers, that holds him in place. And then pop, and he's on. Give him a clean. Okay, now we've got the chain on, and what we do now is check the wheel alignment and tension. Okay, I'm quite happy with the chain tension at the moment. It may look more than our two and a half centimetres that you're expecting. That's because at the moment the bike has no weight on it or no load. So you are looking to check that when the bike is under load, not as it is there. So what we're looking at now is wheel alignment and chain tension. So as I said, I'm happy with the tension. I think that's pretty good. And we'll do a final check on that for our two and a half centimeters um, with me sat on the bike and you'll be able to see that that's a lot less. Um, next thing then, what I do makes life a lot easier for if you're trying to center your wheel and you're not sure, this is a really good little trick because the lines that you can see here aren't very accurate. I use a little metal rule and you can see there's a little indentation on the top of that mark there. Make sure it's nice and square and you've got the square edge there. So what I do is I line that on there and measure. And at the moment, that's about 55 mil. If you wanna be, you don't have to be millimeter perfect. You know, you're looking at that. So what I do is I put a nice line on my rule and I know that when this side is there between that mark and the end of the swing arm I know I'm looking for the same the other side so if we go to the other side now have a look there at the moment we can see that Keep lining up, not far out. We're just pulling back a little bit. Okay, I'm happy with that. So we've got 55 mil there, and that's adjusted under tension. 55 mil there. Let's go back to the side and check that. Look at that, and 55 mil spot on there as well. So really happy with that. What we do now is we tweak those up and adjust those. Still lots of uh, slack on there with no load. So 
what we do now. Just tweak him. Do the same on the other side. Just tweak them so it's held in place. Don't put any real massive tension on it. Because what we're going to do now is tighten the main axle up. And then we can do some measurements again. There is a torque wrench setting for the rear wheel, I believe. At the moment, I haven't got it. As soon as I've got any torque wrench settings, I'll put them on the links for you or, or on the Sinis Facebook page. But you're not going mad. Give him a nip. Okay, that's that. Then don't forget your lock nut. So do you want to have a look at that? Okay, so if we've replaced the main nut and tightened him up, make sure all of that's nice and tensioned in, that's all square. Tighten the lock nut. Again, just nip him up. Okay, last but not least, we know we put these to a nice position where they're just under load. Get your lock nut. Just give him a tweak. Again, we do the same the other side. Yeah, he's up to the adjustment. Lock them off. Okay. We can do a last final check with our magic 55 mil. Spot on. Let's check the other side. Fifty-five mil spot on. So we're really happy with that. We've got everything back in. Everything's turning freely. What we do now is we will lubricate the chain. So this side. Give a little lead. We clean the chain quite regularly, so it's really more for effect than anything else. So we're happy with all of that. Give everything a nice clean. I'll do the same the other side. No need to see me clean it. Right. Really happy with that. Okay, now we can see what I was talking about. Um, we're putting weight on the back wheel, and we're going to do two tasks at once here. We're going to put weight on the back wheel to check this tension under load, and also don't forget to give the back brake a couple of stamps to reseat your brake pads. So that's the next job. So if my glamorous assistant. Assistant is going to sit on the bike. Bounce the bike a couple of times just to check we're okay. Okay, and now we're looking for our two and a half centimeters, as you can see. That's pretty much about the full deflection there. Notice how different the chain is when you actually got weight on it than when it was with offload. Because remember, when your suspension compresses, 
you get to a point of tightening on the chain. So if I pull the chain there, if you watch bounce the bike, you can see the chain very slightly compressing and tightening. And that's what you're looking at, which is why we're talking about the two and a half centimeters when it's on load. If you do two and a half centimeters with it off load, you're gonna have a chain that's absolutely razor tight and razor sharp in the end where it's just eating away at the sprocket. So really, that's it. That's our quick demonstration of changing the back wheel and checking the chain on a Sinus terrain. Very easy, no real problems. A um, lot easier if you've got two people, obviously, instead of having to try and hold everything so you can see it instead of looking at it yourself. But I think you can see, lovely job, well thought out, um, no real problems. Thank you very much.